Today we're going to be focusing on light. If you have a flashlight and a mostly round fruit, you can make this same setup at your house so that you can observe how light energy moves and some important features that light has. Today I'm using a mini pumpkin and we're going to observe how the light travels from the light source. The light source is the flashlight and you can see that the light is going towards the pumpkin. Now what happens when the light hits the pumpkin? You can see a lot of light being reflected off the surface of the pumpkin and it's a brilliant orange color because of the light that's being reflected. The light does not go through the pumpkin. The pumpkin blocks light rays. We know this because of shadows. Shadows are where there is an absence of light energy. All objects have two shadows. Let's look carefully at the pumpkin and see if you can find both of the shadows the pumpkin has. The first shadow is the one that's going to be the most familiar to you. If you look behind the pumpkin, you can see that it is casting a shadow that starts over here. You can see the line of darkness and here. And because I have this blocker folder set up, you can see how the shadow is being cast on the wall behind the pumpkin. This is probably what you think of when you think of a shadow. You've seen your shadow. You've maybe even used your hands to make shadow puppets on a wall. But there's another shadow on the pumpkin. Can you find it? Well, the clue is that it's on the pumpkin. So every object will cast a shadow. It will block the light from going through and there'll be a shadow in the opposite direction that the light is coming from. But notice how this side of the pumpkin is brightly lit while the back side is not. This is the second shadow. You can see the line where the light stops and how this part of the pumpkin is not illuminated by the flashlight. I bring this up because it'll help you understand moon phases and eclipses later on. Every object has two shadows. The one on the object on the opposite side from the light source and the other one that's being cast behind the object in the opposite way of the light source. If you move the light source, the shadows move. So now the light source is on top of the pumpkin. Can you see the shadow that's being cast underneath the pumpkin? And can you see the difference between the illuminated part of the pumpkin and the shadow that's on the pumpkin? So we have the cast shadow and the shadow that's on the pumpkin. For your drawing today, you're going to set your light source up so that you can see both of the shadows. Here is the cast shadow. Here is the shadow that's on my pumpkin. And in your science journal, you're going to draw 
the object and its shadows. Do not draw the flashlight. The light source is important because it's providing the light, but that's not what I want you concentrating on. I want you concentrating on the light itself hitting the pumpkin or the apple or the orange, whatever fruit you're using, and the two shadows. Make your sketch a good size. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but at the same time, this should not be something that you do in a rushed or hurried manner. As you're sketching, I want you thinking carefully about light and dark. I want you thinking about shadows. And all I'm doing right now is focusing on areas of light and dark. And on this pumpkin, because of its shape, there is a darker area on this side. There's a darker area on the stem. My light source is coming this way. I'm going to label my light. Notice how the light is traveling. Is it in squiggles? It is, is it in waves? Does it wrap around the pumpkin? Does it start over here and go to this side? Absolutely not. Light travels in a straight path. It hits the pumpkin. Some light is bounced back this way. Some light is absorbed into the pumpkin. No light goes through the pumpkin. That's why we have our shadows, both here and here. So in our drawing, we're going to be focusing on those shadows those areas of light and dark and concentrating on those. 